Hi, my name is Ernie McLean. I'm a habitat steward with the National Wildlife Federation and I'm on the leadership team with the Charlotte chapter of the North Carolina Wildlife Federation. We're here today in my backyard and we're going to take a walk around to see what kind of things are out there. It's important for people to get outside during this time of isolation and see the wonders of nature that are right out our back door. So join me and let's take a walk to see what we can find in my backyard. Come on. This is a bluebird house with a predator guard, but as you can see, a brown-headed nuthatch has built a nest in it. Songbirds feed their young insects because they're full of protein and can be easily digested. She's a little angry that I'm so close to her nest. Here she is visiting a suet feeder. I feed the birds to help fill the gaps in their search for natural food. Suet is also suitable for newly hatched birds due to its soft composition. The piece at the bottom of this suet feeder helps woodpeckers to perch by supporting the tails, mimicking the trunk of a tree. In early spring, many pollinators are already out gathering nectar, so it's good to provide native plants that bloom now to support them. This is a native honeysuckle called John Clayton. It flowers now through November. It's a great plant to have to support hummingbirds. This one climbs 20 feet up into an oak tree. Its cousin, the red virgin, called Major Wheeler. I have this one growing on a trellis and it too will bloom through November, greeting the hummingbirds as they arrive and helping them to prepare for their fall migration. It's perfectly shaped blooms for the ruby-throated hummingbird. I hear a northern cardinal. Let's see if we can find him. There he is, proclaiming his territory and keeping watch for other males who may enter his realm. I had five pair of cardinals over the winter and they didn't mind sharing the feeders, but now that it's time to raise a family, they battle daily to carve out their own boundaries. Both the male and the female sing, so there's a multiple chorus taking place throughout the day. They will become noticeably quieter once their eggs hatch. I love the blue flowers in the landscape. This Gila Siberica is an early bloomer and it comes back each year with a splash of color scattered throughout the landscape and in the background the azaleas are just now coming into bloom if you add a bird bath to your landscape you'll soon be rewarded with a host of visitors like this female white-throated sparrow they winter here in north carolina but will soon be returning to their breeding grounds in canada Providing water is actually more important than providing food, as there are many sources of natural seed and insects for birds, but most yards do not have a water source. Bathing is just a part of their personal grooming process. Feathers must be realigned and conditioned with the help of an oily substance found at the base of their tail which provides waterproofing and flexibility. This activity is called preening. Very interesting to watch this activity during the day. She, like all winter visitors, will be leaving in a few days to head back north. A beautiful sign of spring in the Carolinas is the bloom of the eastern redbud tree. Another native found in our landscapes and along our highways, these understory trees produce seed pods in the fall. Another visitor to my feeder is this pine warbler. Here, a female supplementing her diet of insects and suet, the pine warbler 
is a year-round resident here. And they prefer nest in the outer limbs of pine trees about 30 feet or higher. This is a nesting block for mason bees and also for leafcutter bees who are actively building nests and laying eggs right now. A solitary pollinator, mason bees are one of the earliest to venture out because of their production process. Unlike the honeybee, mason bees don't gather in hives. They seek out woodpecker holes and other insect holes for nesting. They get their name from the mortar-like application they apply when sealing off the egg cavities. They enter a cavity head first to deposit their pollen and then when ready, they come out, turn around, and back into the cavity to lay eggs. If you purchase or build a mason box, it is very important to maintain it properly or you may be condemning the larva to predatory wasp, fungus, or mold. Do your homework and learn the proper way to care for a bee house. One of the loudest and most persistent bird songs comes from the Carolina Wren. Here, they built a nest in one of my water cans, which is laying on its side in a plant stand on my deck. They will build a nest just about anywhere they feel there's shelter and support for their oval nests. These busybodies are fun to watch and consume a wide variety of insects. They've also been observed to eat small lizards, small frogs, and worm snakes. They're often the very first bird you'll hear in the morning. One of my favorite critters in the landscape is the eastern chipmunk. They stay very busy foraging for seed and protecting their burrows, which have numerous entrances and chambers. They keep a good sized stash of food in their underground chamber and through the winter, they don't fully hibernate, but become dormant, waking up occasionally to eat. Chipmunks, depending on their habitat, can live up to eight years. Another year round resident here is the Eastern Bluebird. Once only found in open meadows and farmland, they become more common in our open residential landscapes. Bluebirds visit seed feeders but their diet consists mainly of insects. They have up to three broods a year from early March through August, and they are certainly a joy to have in our backyards. Here's a brown snake warming itself in the sun of a young cedar. They only grow about 12 inches long and eat slugs, earthworms, and snails. Thank you for joining me today in my backyard, and I hope this inspires you to take a look around your own property, your own backyard, a close by greenway, nature preserve or park. There's a lot going on in nature right now as animals, wildlife, and flowers really come to life. So get out and take a look and experience the wonderful joys of nature.